see and to, to address. So I guess the, yeah, the final thing in terms of these budget instructions is a lot is focused in those budget conferences and um, the CEO, assistant CEO, budget officer all participate, uh, the auditor participates, and uh, we go through the budgets in, in quite a bit of detail and also have that discussion. At different years, we've focused on grants, we've focused on trust funds. We always go over all those things, but each year there's a different focus. This year, obviously, the focus is on the ge geographic distribution of services. So I'd be happy to answer any questions on this part of the process, and then I'll talk about the rest of today and how it all fits together. So is there any questions? Supervisor Smith. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Ms. Glassy, a question on um, from the, the first section here where it talks about the financial overview and departments will be, reassign will be assigned a reduction in their net county cost by 6% as they formulate the numbers. How does that interface with the 85% of current budget that you talked about, the, the public sector, if you will, concept of trying to approach it from a zero budgeting mm -hmm. standpoint? So how, how, how do those two concepts roll out together? Basically, the 6% the is an actual reduction in the assigned net county cost for their, the purposes of budgeting, and that is this sheet that is uh, behind the budget instructions. So this shows you the um, assigned net county cost. And um, while I'm at it, I'll just say the other two items here. One is talking about the org charts and how we'd like to see them done this time around, and the other is the um, page from the internet that talks about Munis and the budget instructions in Munis. Obviously, I didn't want to give you the budget instructions from Munis, but just to show how all of this fits together. So back to your question in terms of the 6% represents a reduction in the assigned net county cost from this fiscal year. You take out one-time only expenses that are clearly one-time only expenses, and then you do a 6% reduction. At the same time, the budget instructions talk about departments absorbing the costs of any merit raises that their staff get, the costs of any wage increases that have been negotiated and go are going into effect. And for the majority of staff, there is going to be a market adjustment in July and a COLA adjustment in January. And those two things I'll say worst case scenario, if you will, could be as much as 7% um, if, if they were both at the top. So taking kind of the worst case scenario, it could in fact be less than that. So 6% reduction, absorption of 7% is around 13%, and then you factor in anyone who gets state funding there may be a reductions of up to 10% in, in state funding. There also may be delays in the state paying, which is a loss of interest revenue to the county and a cash flow, um, or an increase in interest payments on the trams. So it could hit us a number of different ways. But um, when you put all that together, it's around 15%. So that's how I got the 85% was that cumulatively the, the proposed targets reduce by about 15%. And in terms of the geographic distribution of services, which I think is an excellent way to have departments think about their expenditures mm -hmm. and uh, the dissemination of services mm -hmm. in the county, what is that going to look like when it gets its, makes its way to the board and makes its way to the budget book? I know you're making changes in mm -hmm. that uh, presentation this year. I think some of those look very positive. I mm -hmm. looked at um, is why it had a copy of the Humboldt County budget book, which I think was a lot more user friendly and actually provided more uh, valuable information in an easily uh, uh, assimilated manner. But um, so how how when when we actually then see the proposed mm -hmm. budget, how are we going to have a handle on or see the discussion of uh, or the department decisions or the CEO's recommendations based on the question of geographic distribution? That's a really good question, and what I'd say is 
in part, we're kind of waiting to see what we get in the budget conferences, and then out of that, we will put together something. The budget conferences are end of April. The May workshop is at the end of May. So we've got some time to figure out how all of that comes together. And there might be a department that has a particularly clear way of, of addressing it, in which case we'd probably ask everyone to use that same format. So we will come up with the format, but I can't tell you right now what it's going to look like. Thank you. Other questions from the board or Ms. Classy? Um, I, I'd like to thank you. I think this is a very intelligent way to be proceeding, um, thinking differently and more extensively into the budget development as we proceed, um, needing to think differently because we're looking at some, some very different scenarios for mm -hmm. the money in the future. So I appreciate Tom and, and your work, Allison, on this, and Jennifer, and uh, look forward to having it proceed down the pipe. So. Okay. So from this discussion, um, we go into the, the rest of the meeting, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about the role of assumptions in our process, and then I'm going to stop talking. So the, the next thing after this overview will be the fee hearings. And the, the change in process this year is that we are coordinating the fee hearings with the budget process. This is our first time doing it. As we go through it, I'm sure there are things that will occur to us that we'll want to do a little differently the next time around. But the point is, both processes are talking to each other, and that's really important. Um, and the part of the tie-in with the budget process is that revisions to fees are based on the cost of providing service. So, you know, as you know what the cost of providing service are through the budget process, then you want that reflected in your fees and, and vice versa. So that's one piece of this, and, and it's fee hearings, as well as an update of the business license fee ordinance and, and the business license fees associated with that. The next uh, series of, uh, or pair of items on the agenda have to do with the retirement system. And again, we are coordinating these reports with the budget process. And there are a number of ways in which that's happening. One is that we're building in the uh, recommended, or what comes out of today's meeting, uh, the contribution rate that the county adopts into the budget and into the salary projections so that we can budget for that up front. In some prior years, there hasn't been as direct a connection, and sometimes things change, and it wasn't reflected in the, in the proposed budget. So we're trying to reflect it in the budget as early as possible. And then, as you'll hear, there is a proposal to uh, fund the, um, the accrued actuarial liability at a higher level than in the past, and that also is something that we need to anticipate in the budget. So that's the connection. That's why they're on today's agenda. The final thing I want to talk about are just the roles of assumptions, because I'm sure you, like we, have been reading the clipping service and you know seeing what other counties have been doing. And in some cases, they've actually been directing some very specific actions to take place even in this in this fiscal year, and you know allowing for differences of, of funding or even budgeting in, in different uh, counties, it's still something that that we pay attention to and go, hmm, okay, what are they doing? Um, so I wanted to talk about the role of assumptions in the budget development process. First is that we presented to you in the February budget workshop what assumptions were going into this whole process, and. You do have copies of that presentation, but I did make additional copies of the particular slides that related to that. So I don't know if that would be copies for the public up, up here. But we talked in the budget, in that particular presentation, about what county budget.